Hey everybody, it's Fit Rockstar here and I'm with the buff, beautiful, oh my god, totally muscular, one of the most muscular bodybuilders in the world, Alicia Young. Oh, well, thank thank you. you for being here. Thanks for having me. Oh my I'm god. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Like I'm getting goosebumps right now. <laughs> Two girly girls having a conversation. Yes. yes. Right? So Alicia again, thank you for coming out. Um, want to talk about last year. You know, you went through some difficult stuff mm -hmm. with COVID. Yes. Can you let us, because you live in Utah, right? Mm -hmm. Where in Utah? Salt Lake City? Um, just outside of Salt Lake City. Oh, like, mm -hmm. Okay. And so how was the gym scene over there? Was it, everything was closed down, right? Yeah, they closed pretty much everything. Um, probably the hardest thing for me was just homeschooling, trying to manage Got if I daughter. could train. And I just, all I can say about that is these teachers need to, make a lot more money <laughs> right. right me just trying to manage and teach one was i right. can't imagine a classroom full of that. so you're teaching uh your daughter mm -hmm. and then the gyms were closed mm -hmm. right so how are you able to even get ready for a show right it it was tricky i mean i have a few things at home dumbbells right. um functional trainer so i was able to do some of that i did have a private gym a couple of weeks after it had closed that we sort of could get a few workouts in once in a while but mm -hmm. it was it was a challenge for sure did you have any uh now you did the rise of phoenix but before that did you have any contests that you had planned to do that got canceled or you just mm -hmm. decided okay this isn't going to work yeah i had prepped for puerto rico so i started my prep pretty much in january um, and puerto rico was postponed twice so i was dieting 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 postpone postpone and then canceled mm -hmm. so at that point i had already been dieting for so long and as you know being a competitor it's it's not even just about the diet but the body just stops responding yeah absolutely. so i knew you know i wasn't going to i really did end up dieting most of the year though mm -hmm. um and then just went into the rising phoenix now before the rising phoenix so a few days three days prior right mm -hmm. something happened to your parents mm -hmm. and that was pretty traumatic for you right yeah so um my parents were in a, a side by side which is like a razor you know toy mm -hmm. um that was stuck and they hooked the wench on a tree um unfortunately the tree broke uh flipping the machine and throwing my mom out with the razor landing on top of her wow. Um, so they were, luckily my dad is, is strong and, um, the adrenaline and everything was able to lift mm -hmm. that machine off of her. Um, but they weren't sure of her condition or how that was going to be. So yeah, receiving that phone call of sheer panic from your dad, not knowing if your mom is going to make it or what the situation was, uh, the last thing in my mind was a show. Right. Like that was like the furthest thing from my mind at that point. Right. So... Um, I even the next day didn't think about the show didn't I had no plans of even going to do the Rising Phoenix um, until it really was my dad saying and he was a bodybuilder too like I already have so much guilt of you know having your mom in this situation if you didn't complete what you started and put so much work into I would feel terrible mm -hmm. so as soon as I was sure that everybody was stable and that the doctors would be able to maintain everything i i did go to the rising phoenix because it was my dad's wishes and i did need to finish what i started so right. and i'm glad i did it was a yeah. good experience and they were happy that you looked that incredible at the rising you. phoenix you did Thank and you. your dad would you say is your biggest fan yes yeah yes. you guys actually competed together right we did mm -hmm. this was before you became a pro right? yes okay yeah so that show was really special um because he had just overcame colon cancer and had his large intestines removed, and that was my first show after I had my baby. So it was a really big, I don't think either of us looked our best, but it was a huge, like monumental, it was mm -hmm. really fun to be able to mm -hmm. share that with him. I remember seeing your pregnancy pictures, and there's the one 
famous one. I think you're on the beach. Is it on the beach? Mm-hmm. You have your mm-hmm. hand. And oh my God, you're so. So how many, bitch. How, how was that? Nine months? How? So I had her at six months. So she was three months premature. Wow. But I was, before I delivered her, believe this or not, I'm not even, I'm five foot three. I was 292 pounds. Holy smokes. Mm -hmm. And that was only to six months. Can you imagine if I, yeah. That would be crazy. 292 (laughs) pounds. Mm Mm-hmm. I was Holy smokes! Massive. What's your off season like anyway? What's the biggest you ever get? Um, big, I mean, biggest ever. I've I've gotten to two thirty, two thirty five, <laughs> but it wasn't wasn't pretty. I'm not you know yeah. not all, all big things are pretty. You but. weren't doing like the sweatpants and stuff, right? No. Like some, no. See, I got up to two ten, and I'm five five, and mm-hmm. I was wearing the sweatpants. Couldn't really see my feet. You know, mm-hmm. two ten really wasn't my weight. I'm more. I'm good at 180, right? But I um, can't get the 292 out of my head though. With you, right? Totally that was smokes. not a comfortable. No. Yeah, that you, was a whole lot of boobs, butt, belly, <laughs> a lot going on there. So your father, he was a bodybuilder. So is that why you got into bodybuilding? Yeah, it was a, a situation of I was a dancer and cheerleader, gymnast, all growing up, um, and I wanted that ballerina body. Like I wanted to be long legs, skinny. Um, in my mind, my eight-year-old mind, I was going to be a ballerina. And um, by about 12, my dad knew, Alicia, you're not going to be a ballerina. So you were like, already stocky. At yeah, the, very. Really? Sh- and I was really strong, but I, I didn't like it at all. Now, when you so. say really strong, like what? Give me an example. How did you know you were really strong? Um, like in cheerleading, I was always the base. I was always on the bottom. You know, coaches would never even think to put a female lifting the other girls until I was like, I, I think I could do that. And just being able to do what all the boys could do mm-hmm. with the cheerleader girls. But better. Yeah, right. Yeah. Were you a bully in school? Uh, I wasn't a bully. No? No. Even but I can you were met. stronger. And- yeah. Okay. But muscle wasn't a cool thing for me. I mean, I, my, probably my earliest memory, I was eight, and a boy would, like, tease me about my arms being so big. And I remember first grade, like, I didn't want to wear short sleeve shirts. Yeah. I was, of that. yeah, I was so self-conscious so of that. So arms and the legs were the, like your biggest attributes growing up. You always had that. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. And what sports did you play? Um, I did gymnastics, cheerleading, track, softball, pretty much. Everything. Played everything. Wow. Yeah. So when did you finally say, okay, you know what? I'm going to really take this bodybuilding seriously and step it up. I think my dad, uh, like I said, he he recognized that maybe I was going down a path of not being happy with my body. And and every girl goes through a transition sure. of trying to be comfortable in your own skin and, you know, eating disorders and working so hard against what my body was naturally good at that he knew I was really competitive and an athlete. So he's like, hey, come to the gym. But for all these years, I'd been trying to get rid of muscle. So the thought of lifting weights was terrifying to me. Um, But when I got in there and realized that I was squatting and lifting weights that some of these guys had been doing for years, um, he put me in my first powerlifting meet in high school. And I broke all the state records. So you started out with powerlifting. Mm Mm-hmm. So yeah. that was the base for you with the bodybuilding. Then. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. So I did. I did some heavy lifting and. And you broke records. So what was your? So what did you do? Like deadlifting, benching. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. I think. Gosh, if I remember. So high school, I was, bent, or I was squatting three seventy five. Lightweight. Yeah. <laughs> like sixteen and. Oh my god. Yeah, it, the football coach used to use me as motivation in the sure. weight training room. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. What about benching? Um, 315 was my high school. So have you ever lifted the 350-pound dumbbells? I haven't. Yeah, you have. Ooh. I've seen video. 350 You dumbbells. know the gold ones? I haven't tried have you, you know what I'm talking about, though, right? Do they they're, really? They're, I think one person used one of them for like a deadlift type of thing. Wow. Yeah. Who makes those? That's I don't a, know. i just seen them. Serious It's situation. like angels are all around them. Right. But I had to ask, because you are pretty strong. I mean, yeah. again, you're very intimidating. 
Why do you laugh? It's true. But you are. As soon as you walk into a place, everybody turns around and they're looking. I'm like, oh, my God, look at this girl. (laughs) I mean, how many guys have been smacked in the face by their girlfriend or wife or whatever because you're there and they're looking and they just can't help it but look. Seriously, how many have have you ever had that situation happen? Yeah, I've had that situation. And muscle's funny, though, right? Like, I think people either really like it or really don't. There's not a lot of gray area. Um, And I don't always know if it's uh, like a look out of desire, curiosity. Um, You, of all people, don't know if it's a look of curious (laughs) or, or, hey, it's like hot or less, you know, less fall. Really? Well, I'm just, I don't know. Come on. I don't know if You are the sex, okay, I'm going to go a step further. And some girls may get mad at me for saying this, but it's true. You are the sex symbol in female bodybuilding. Like, you are just the, the Barbie doll of women's bodybuilding in my opinion you have the size you've got the beauty and let's face it she's got the big kakungas you know Uh, (laughs) that some of us wish we'd have that's a big title to live up to um but you you do you have all those things oh well thank you you know and and going into your competition history i'm just going to say this i think you're a huge threat a big threat and I think people should be aware of that because, you know, when you bring it, you bring it. I'm going to yeah. go back into uh, the year when you did uh, the Chicago Pro Show and you won. Mm-hmm. I mean, literally, when you stepped out on stage, I was looking at the judges and they're all just like looking and they're like, <laughs> you know, pointing to your legs and your mm-hmm. body. They can't believe what they're seeing because it's just wow. And in, in the audience, you're hearing people going crazy, like, oh, my God, she's so beautiful. Oh, my God, her oh. legs. Oh, my God, her arms. Oh, my God. You know, it just doesn't stop. Yeah. You know, and I feel people like you, among some other athletes that we have in women's bodybuilding, that the people come to see because it's like, wow, you don't see that yeah. every day. Oh, I but appreciate that. when you won the Chicago Pro Show, <laughs> you beat Andrea Shaw, who mm-hmm. came in second. Yeah. And so... The next year, as you know, Andrea came and won. You know, she won the Omaha. Yeah. She got the Rising Phoenix and the Olympia. Right. So I'm saying this to you because now it's your time to shine. Mm-hmm. And I'm curious. I'm. I know for a fact. You know, this year is going to be your year of a lot of things. Yeah. Because I want to see you on the Olympia stage. You know, and you're gonna rock it. It's nice mm-hmm. to see some fresh faces up yeah, there. Definitely. Now, I got to be honest with you. People like me who do come in smaller, I'm nowhere near your weight. I would be 155, 160, and you're what? 170, 175? Yeah, 175, 180. Do you plan mm-hmm. on getting bigger this year? Um, I've never really focused on size. That's never been my main. And people are like, what? But size just comes very pretty naturally to me um it's really that conditioning getting that shredded i think genetically some people are more blessed in that direction you know everybody has different genetics so it's for me to get that really lean shredded look that they're looking for i that has to you be really my think focus. they want that lean shredded look because in my opinion i find that to be extremely unhealthy i agree mm-hmm. you know i don't want to see a sunken in face no i don't i don't really want to see the the shredded glutes you know mm-hmm. i think it should be in between yeah you diet down train hard and supplement smart for months when the time comes to step on stage don't leave your tan to chance go with the pros Pro Tan, number one worldwide since 1987 and the official sponsor of the Olympia for the last 15 years. Don't step on stage without it. Pro Tan. You know, you see it, but it's not really popping. Yeah, or, or in my opinion, I mean, I think it would be amazing to even just have to maybe two weight categories within female mm-hmm. bodybuilding um, because again genetically you know a smaller girl may be way way leaner than me but she'll never put on muscle like me and it's not that one's better than the other it's just apples to oranges we have a very different physique and and I kind of see it as you wouldn't put the 212 guys against the open so again uh, with me being my last name Terrell and then I have Heli Trevino she's in mm. front of me and she's coming out and then I'm coming out and it's like oh, 
night and day. Right, right. You know, and I don't care how great the symmetry I may bring or whatever, but still, it's she's got all the mass. Right. So I agree with you. There should be two weight class, either weight class or high class. Right. One of those two. Yeah. Um, because then it gives people more opportunity. Absolutely. But at the same time, we want to have big girls like yeah. yourself, and that's what it's about in bodybuilding. Right. So, and I think you know the the fans also really love like a bigger maybe softer look because you can maintain mm -hmm. more muscle um but yeah i at least in my experience and my criticism f or advice from the judges has always been get leaner get leaner get leaner so um and that has been rewarded so mm -hmm. well, when you went to chicago you again you looked amazing thank you but you, I mean, you were shredded, but you weren't like crazy shredded, which right. I think that look you brought was perfect and what bodybuilding should be, in right. my opinion. Right. But what I brought to Chicago Pro Shop is because not only did you win that, but you also beat a future Miss Olympia. Mm -hmm. So in saying that, I mean, it's anyone's game. Yeah. And you are someone who, when I first saw you on the scene, you got your pro card in 2014 mm -hmm. at Nationals, right? Uh, USA's. USA's. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're both USA yes. champs. Hey, there we go. All right. Yes. Um, God, I feel old now. Stop. Oh, God. Got no, mine in 08. I was, Jesus. 2014, yep. Yeah. I'm not even going to say my age. I'm not going to 21. But anyway. <laughs> yeah, uh, of course. So, you're a threat. And I feel that you strongly, like I said, when you, when you came on the scene, I'm like, oh my God, this girl's got so much mass. I've never seen anyone like this before. Mm -hmm. And I was intimidated, you know? I'm Ugh. like, I don't wanna stand next no. to this girl, yeah. you know? But there are girls now, I know, in the circuit, who when they see your name on the list, they're freaking out. Wow. They are freaking out. And it, uh, you know, I that's like a huge compliment because a lot of these girls, like I, I looked up to, for a long time and it took me a while to actually believe that I could be competitive mm -hmm. and that I really belonged up there and and I get asked all the time like well what did you do now to get your conditioning what did you know because it, it took me a while to figure that out and and a huge thing even if I'm talking to a younger generation or you know somebody that has a similar build to me a big thing with that was just time I don't think I work any harder now or that I worked any less hard years ago. I just had a younger body. So you wouldn't change? I mean, if there is something you can change with your younger self or give advice to your younger self, what would it be? I think um, just be a little more patient and not take, you know, because I, I did get a lot of criticism for not being in shape mm -hmm. and I took it really personal because I felt like I was honestly doing everything I knew how to do and one of the big determining factors was I was 12 years younger than the girls I was competing against mm -hmm. you know my estrogen was way higher my uh, my age my body wanted to have babies right. not be four percent body fat right. And, and that's just the truth. I mean, you know, I, I get so excited when I see these girls that are bigger, softer, but I, the part that makes me a little nervous for them is getting that shredded look is so against their grain mm -hmm. that I don't want them to like get burnt out or frustrated or feel like they can't be competitive. Because at one point I sort of felt like that. Yeah, you it's know? hard, right? Yeah, because it's like, man, I hear of these super lean girls that are only doing 30 minutes of cardio and I'm doing three sessions of 45 minutes. Like I, yeah. I didn't know at that point, like what else can I do? Right. Um, but that being said too, they, they can't put on muscle in the off season. They have to really force feed, really try. So, you know, there's good and bad in, in both situations. So what is your off season like, or right now what's your contest prep like? I mean, is it pretty easy do you train every single day I train I love to train hard um, that's been like a staple for me is off season I just I just really enjoy training so um, obviously I back off on my cardio and one thing for me is I have to let go I just have to have balance so especially when it comes to food and friends and you know social gathering stuff like that I don't now you also have a lot of control of things. So one of the things I got to bring up from the COVID, mm -hmm. we were obviously in lockdown, 
But I remember you posting something about your drawers, uh-huh. rearranging everything. <laughs> and so you had like these before and after pictures. Uh-huh. The before, it was all messed up, the drawers and yeah. everything. And after, it was like, I think it was labeled. And uh-huh. How long did it take you to do? I mean, you're really specific about yeah. everything. I can be, yeah. And this applies also to your bodybuilding. Sure. You're just Everything is laid out for you. Yes. Pills, everything, yes. the supplementation, mm. uh, the food, the water intake, yeah. training. And for me, I think the way I've been able to to manage that without letting it interfere with my real life too because I think I mean every bodybuilder every competitor has to have a level of OCD a level of you know it's intense it's not like a basketball game you show up play your game and go grab a beer with your buddies right you know it's anybody knows that to be competitive you have to be really intense so I try and um, embrace that level of control and that level of OCD, if you want to, you know, making right. sure everything is exact mm-hmm. during my prep and I'm a hundred percent on, I don't, you know, try and make excuses for myself or, you know, I do my very best to control the controllable. Um, but when the show is over, it's for me, it's not even about eating terrible food or it's really just letting go of that control. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So finding a balance between, I don't need to weigh exactly five ounces of chicken but I don't need to go eat a Big Mac either. Mm -hmm. So just finding somewhere in the middle, I think has been, has helped me. One, I think it's easy to become almost bitter towards the sport if you give it too much Mm -hmm. or if you feel like it's taking away too much. Mm -hmm. So you have to do that. I think especially with when you have kids or other obligations or, you know. Is Olivia going to get into bodybuilding? (sighs) Oh, I... On truth, <laughs> I hope not. Um, and a lot of people are like shocked when I say yeah. that. Um, but I look at her and she's tall, skinny, those beautiful long legs. She is my ballerina. Mm-hmm. Right. So I look at her and I'm like, I would have given anything to have that body. Mm-hmm. And she's so fun for me to dress because mm-hmm. it's like nothing that would ever work for me fits her beautifully right it's perfect she's like your, your little oh, dog you just dress like a little yeah. so speaking of clothing now so you have a very difficult hard time finding clothes because the arms Nightmare. the legs the boo-boos mm-hmm. you know it's just so how do you do it man what's the secret besides ripping clothes one, and one size fits all no size fits it's all. um I like especially jeans, stuff like that. A yeah, lot how of do you find are, your jeans? They're they're all either custom made or altered. Custom made jeans. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jesus. Or you know, we luckily we have this whole jigging situation. Right. So yeah, stretch is right. key. How many dresses have you broke trying on like, oh, when you go shopping? So many. Or gotten stuck in in the right. dressing room, like knocking, asking. Oh, you've somewhere. gotten stuck. Oh yeah. Yeah, no. I think I saw too. You invented this little thing to help with our uh, zip. No, so I got really pissed off because I was trying to dress on for the show. Yeah, and it took me forty-five minutes to get this thing on. I couldn't get it, oh. and I was trying to bend my arms. Every, and you know, we can, right. we're only so flexible. Yeah. So I saw this thing on Amazon. We can attach it to your dress and zip it up. Genius. It worked. Did it work? It did I'm gonna work. have to get one of those. Yeah, and there's so many, but I just got tired of asking people. To help I would, you. Yeah, I'd ask the, the cleaning maid, hey, come, can you zip me up? Look at me like <laughs> right. an idiot. Right. You know, but yeah, so I'm going to have to get one of those. I've, I've done times where I ripped into dresses, you yep. know, put it back on a rack mm-hmm. and just walked away. Mm-hmm. But now we can't really try clothes on because of the COVID situation. Right. But so what is your goals with female bodybuilding? How much longer do you think you're going to be in it? I know that's a very <clears throat> intense question to ask, but you're a businesswoman. I am. You have mm-hmm. multiple businesses, and now you're also getting into photography. Mm-hmm. You know, you're successful, and uh, man, a lot of women can learn from you because oh, thank you. with you take a lot of photo shoots. I mean, you yeah. know how to build your content mm-hmm. very well. What are some of the things you can tell some girls in the sport who? Or trying to look for that right photographer or trying to build mm. content for their social media right. or website, what, what would you say to them? I think um, <clears throat> the most important thing is to just be authentic to yourself because I think that's really going to show through. So don't try and imitate somebody else or don't, you know, I think we're all inspired 
by other people, you know, and, and get that inspiration. But at the end of the day, you have to be true to yourself because I think that's really what's going to shine through. And that's really what the fans want to see, too. They want to know. And I've I've tried to get better at this, too, sharing your real authentic self. Hmm. So not just I'm always glammed up. I'm always six percent body fat, but more like the real man, I'm doing this cardio again and I feel terrible. Right. You know, some, that's right. relatable. That's something... Where we see people who just, the filters. And all yeah, that kind of stuff, and right? at some level. And and I've had to learn that too because I part of me is like, well, do they really want to know? Or are they cur-? But they're genuinely curious. They actually, fans actually do want to know. They want to yeah, see these other right. sides of you. Mm-hmm. Uh, so in saying that, do you put your whole life out there <clears throat> or do you keep certain things private? Yeah... I mean, unfortunately, I think with social media, there's there's a safety factor. Right. There's and I've I've gone back and forth with things like this. Like, you know, do I post my daughter? Do I not? Mm-hmm. Do I protect her? Do I not? Um, and for me, again, it's within realms of safety being first. It's being authentic to who I am. Like, I'm not just a bodybuilder. I am a mom and actually first and foremost I'm a mom so me not sharing that wouldn't be being true to myself I mean she is my whole life Mm -hmm. so um, I feel like it's important for me to share that not just for other people but for myself Mm -hmm. like this really is my real life Mm -hmm. so um, I think posting that and sharing that will hopefully help people realize that you can have and do other things and still be a good bodybuilder. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that is one of the things that people really admire about you and love you. I mean, your fans, you have such a large fan base mm. and they love you because you're authentic, you're genuine, and you're very sweet. Like, mm-hmm. I have seen you at shows and a fan will be like, Hi, Alicia, you know, this, mm-hmm. this, and that. All excited. Their eyes are just wide <laughs> open. And you're all over them. I love it. I really do. You really yeah. love the fans. Yeah. And, and I think it's it's honestly because, like I said, there's there are some people that really don't like muscle and that can be extremely negative. So I embrace people that embrace what I'm doing. It's not the norm. It's not the. But on a negative aspect of female bodybuilding, I mean, again, when they see someone like you, it totally changes their mind because mm. you're beauty and muscle, mm. whereas I some appreciate. girls as we both know, do not take, maybe they don't want to, or they're just maybe lazy. I mean, I'm not mm-hmm. trying to, but they don't really take the time to look feminine. Right, They right. just let it all out there, which they should be comfortable in their own skin. Sure. Absolutely. Sure. But I think in a professional standpoint, when you're out in the public, like at a show or whatever, mm-hmm. look professional. Yeah. You know, don't be looking ratty and, yeah. you know. I agree. Because it, it doesn't set a good example for other People, for sure you know for sure so if i've never seen a female bodybuilder for my life and i saw you i was like oh my god she's so beautiful <laughs> uh-huh. yeah well and that's my that's my real thing you know like i'm a girly girl i yes, love shoes yeah. i love i mean that's, that's how many shoes my, do you have you oh, do have a lot of oh shoes lord and how oh. do you store your shoes see that's gonna be that is the trick so i just moved and I'm really struggling with that. So if you have any solutions. No, I'm asking you because I have a collection of heels shoot. and boots. Yeah. And I don't know how to store my, my so stuff. So there is a great shoe rack that I found. Um, it's about floor to ceiling. It's on wheels so you can move it. Oh, that's, yeah. That's and it good. holds probably 100 shoes, I would say. Mm-hmm. So I did. I have three of those that line a wall. So that's been helpful. But at this point, like being in my house, I still have four boxes full of shoes with no, I don't know. And how many outfits do you have? A lot. Okay. But what people have to understand too, because they're like, oh, you have so many clothes. Well, some of those only fit for eight days right. out of the year. Right. I can't be naked for the week. I still need <laughs> well, clothes. Well, you could. Right? A lot of people would like to see that. <laughs> but actually. it's like when you fluctuate right. 30 pounds mm-hmm. in a year, you're not the same size so you know what really aggravates me is people who talk about oh you should be this weight all year round Mm. you know what i mean because i get that too Mm -hmm. like i Mm -hmm. i do fluctuate my weight obviously and i have the heavier clothes and i have the lighter you know yeah but i get tired of them always throwing my face like you should just be one weight and stick to that now we have one thing of clothes Mm -mm. and i would say because i got that advice as well especially as a new 
um, before I got my pro card as an amateur, there was literally like a 10 pound rule for me. Like, don't go over 10 pounds of what your conscious weight is. Sweetie, when I get home on Monday for my show, I've gained 20 pounds. 20 pounds. Period. Yeah. And that, that's my norm. Right. So for me to stay 10 pounds to conscious weight, even now, it's completely unrealistic. Right. And, and in my opinion, it's not healthy. No, it's for, not. For my body right. type. Right. It's really not. Right. So as a female, I want to get back to a, a point that my hormones are normal. My body fat is a healthy body fat um, just for longevity and for health. I love that you're all about health. Yeah. Because that's a big deal. And it's huge. some people don't really look at the the bigger picture. They just mm-hmm. see the smaller one, you know, the, um, the short term. When you get on stage, you're looking awesome. But then afterwards, you're suffering a whole bunch of sure. metabolic damage and yep. heavy, you know, you gain maybe 40, 50 pounds because yep. they're eating everything in sight. Yep. But you're all about the health, which is good because that is very important, especially for us females. Yes. We have a lot of things going on. Going on. Yeah. Yeah. And especially the young girls. Right. You know, I mean, it's. You only get one body. Right. So you've really got to be cautious about what you're putting into your body, what you're doing. I I think a lot of people, once the show is done and the stage goes black, the people that were in their corner disappear and they don't have that support. They don't have a goal. They don't have. And that's when you really need to lean on the people that matter the most to you and have a plan. Mm-hmm. You know, keep keep yourself healthy, mentally, physically, all those things. All right, you beautiful blonde muscle <laughs> goddess, you. I have to ask now some questions about fans. Okay. You deal with every single person. Sure. What's the worst person you ever dealt with? Like, I won't say worst. worst. I was just yeah. like weird situation. You're like, oh, my God, I can't believe that guy did that or asked me that. Um, I try, I think with the fans, um, it, it genuinely makes me curious mm-hmm. what attracts someone to myself or to muscle in general, or, you know, and I think in this industry, even with the young girls, I try and say, you have to have pretty thick skin because right. I'll have yeah. a lot of people, Alicia, I don't like your hair blonde. I liked you when you were dark. You should have never got a boob job. You should oh have done this. God. You should have, you know, and people have an opinion. Yeah, but they their, need to get their opinion to themselves, <laughs> you know? But it's, but it's a hundred percent. You have to just stay true to yourself and what you feel comfortable with. Um, but I do, I love understanding the fans and what draws them to me or to muscle in general. So I try and keep an open mind because even well, if we the, know it draws them to you, <laughs> but even, at, you know, like if somebody really likes your feet or really right. likes calves, I, that's not something that I would think of, right, but right. if it works for you, Hey, who am I to judge? Right. Until they say, uh, they want your socks. Uh, right. That has happened. Yeah, mm-hmm. sure. And I, again, I am totally fine with random. Sure. I, I do draw the line when it, becomes unprofessional or what's unprofessional i mean i don't i don't think people should just show up oh you know like i've had a few like stalker situations to your house or the gym um yeah salt lake city at shows and and again i'm open to meeting people at shows and signing out but you know there's a line between that for sure for sure and some of these guys are just really Excited, you know. You're, yeah, of course. They're so in awe of your beauty and muscle, you know, and can't yeah. blame them. Yeah. But yeah, there is a limit where you just got to be like, okay, yeah. enough is enough. So, what is the sweetest thing a fan has ever done for you? Hmm, sweetest. I bring you did, flowers. You yeah, know? I did have um, uh, two gentlemen that sent me flowers to the hotel to the Rising Phoenix, which was so nice. Joe Weider's Olympia here in Orlando, Florida. A little bit strange coming out of Las Vegas for all of those years. Good evening and welcome to the event that nearly never happened. There's been an absence of a particular group of people on this stage that are back tonight. Tonight I'm here to say, welcome back to Miss Olympia.
Because you're there for about four days. So that was super sweet. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I had a a great fan that really wanted to sponsor me and buy my posing suit. So I made sure he was included in Mm -hmm. helping pick out the design and the colors. And so me with my seamstress would... Uh you know zoom call with him and wow what do you think about this or would you you know because he was he was paying for a very expensive suit right so we kind of made it a i mean it's expensive what are we talking about two grand because usually our suits are like yeah i mean uh, between i would say 1400 and two yeah, grand so, uh, yeah so yeah. so it was a big investment yeah, for, big investment. for him and i really did appreciate the support so yeah. that was very nice you have a yeah yeah it was fun everything. it was fun uh, so let me ask you this: With your suits, is it really hard to fit your girls in them? Mm-hmm. I mean, seriously. No, it really it's is. It's a lot of cloth. It is. <laughs> well, and I've had um, situations where they've said your your boobs are too big for for bodybuilding. Um, what do you and, think of that when they say that to you? Um, for me. I think because I was naturally born with very big boobs. I mean, let's put it, my mom's a natural double G. Double G? Yeah, natural. G, like good? G. Good, good. (laughs) G, G. Yeah. Oh, my God. Grandma got a pound off each oh, boob. Jesus. So we, I mean, that is. Can you, like, pass the wealth this right? way, please? We'll, we'll hand it oh, over. Oh, my God. But so that being said, I, I had very natural, very big natural breasts at 12, rocking a double D, no problem. <laughs> so when I competed, you know, I, I was really, really young. Yeah. But boobs are fat. And right. I didn't, at the time, I went to a plastic surgeon, and he was like, well, we only have two options. We're either going to have to completely reconstruct, or we're going to have to fill up what you had, which is a lot. So a lot of girls can't go to 900 cc's their first boob drop. Oh, really? I had plenty of room. Uh-huh. Um, I mean, I a doctor wanted to go to 1,400, my very first one. Um, wow. But I also thinking long term hadn't had children yet I wanted to breastfeed I didn't want a full reconstruction Mm -hmm. so I opted just to do the most um, less invasive surgery Mm -hmm. and just put a big enough implant Mm -hmm. so when somebody says that to me um, I wouldn't offend offended is probably a strong word but I'm like this is how my body always has been Mm -hmm. you know I'm not a 110 pound girl with really big boobs i i naturally had so i have big boobs i have a butt i have you know this is just i filled up basically what i did have you've got all the goodies so that being said though i do suit wise i try and minimize that Mm -hmm. um because i don't want them to be distracting either right i i'm not trying to it, you know, it's a sport. It's you want to remain classy. Well, you do a good job on stage. I mean, they're not yeah. like. I mean, of course they're there. You see them, but it's yeah. not like some girls who are pouring out of their suit. A top, yeah. Now, have you had any <laughs> uh, wardrobe malfunctions ever happen? Not on stage, thank. Not on stage. Not on stage. Okay. But yeah, guest posing. That I've had a few close calls. Yeah. Um, photo shoots. Obviously, like, oh gosh. Whoops. Oops. Sorry, I'm open. Are you still guest posing now? Um, I would love to. I'm always open to are it. You, are you doing something in Utah soon or in the coming months? I would like to. Um, I'm going to talk to them again. I guest posed. Because so you've been doing wasn't. Utah for almost mm-hmm. every year, isn't yeah. Right? yeah. 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 It's, um, I mean, obviously, that's my home state and mm-hmm. they really support female bodybuilding. Mm-hmm. So I, and I've tried to really be active there, mm-hmm. encouraging, because we do have a pretty big fitness industry in Utah mm-hmm. and just encouraging even some of these physique girls at the NPC level, like, they have bodybuilding. Mm-hmm. Do it. I remember when I came and I saw you in the Utah. We were going to Comic Con, mm-hmm. and somebody told me I'm going to pray for you because oh, of gosh. my muscles. I'm going to pray for you, <laughs> like I was part of Satan right. because I have muscles working mm-hmm. out. I'm evil, you know. And I'm like, oh wow, well that was a nice little welcome. You're like, thanks. Hello, Utah. Thanks you know? for that. Yeah, but no, it's a it's a beautiful state, beautiful people, and uh, you know, of course, we got you because you are you are from Utah. <laughs> I am born. Mm-hmm. In Utah? Born and raised, yep. What is your middle name? Is it just Alicia Young? I don't have a middle name. You do not have a middle name? Nope. So mom was like, when you get married, I don't want your name to be too long. So she just, she left it. She spelled both mine and my sister's name pretty uniquely. How many siblings do you have? Three? I have one sister, one brother. 
he's in the military, right? They were both. They're both, both the military. military. My sister's army, brother's navy. Are they still in there? Uh, my sister is semi-active. My brother just got out, wow. so he did two deployments. Um, but a lot of people are shocked. I mean, my brother's six foot four. My sister's five eleven. And you're five three. On a good day. Yeah. So where do you get the shortness from? Right. It's where do they get their height from? Well, I mean, my mom's five eleven. My dad's about the same. I've met your parents, uh-huh. and they're both amazing people. They're amazing. Yeah. And I love your dog, Max. Yes. The bully. I'm How old is he now? He's three. Three. Mm-hmm. Okay. He's a tank. Well, what I was going into the guest posing is I think because you're such an amazing athlete, the one thing I would love to see more is you posing more, doing the guest posing, mm. putting your face out there more. I know yeah. you've got a lot going on with you know taking care of your daughter, right. social media, your own businesses and stuff. But I strongly would love to see you being at more shows yeah. and doing guest posing, putting yourself out there because you are a force. You are a serious force in female bodybuilding. Oh, I appreciate that. You are that. someone that can be a Miss Olympia. You are someone that can be a Miss Rising Phoenix yeah. champion. That is the truth. Oh, I appreciate it's, that. And people know that. Yeah. And I'm telling you, just from what I see and hear, and it's good that you don't follow the whole social media stuff. Right. I think it's trash. I think it messes with people's minds. You know, because when you read certain comments, most of these people don't even know what they're talking about. Right, right. You know, they've never even touched the stage or weight in their life. Exactly. You yeah. know, but you are an amazing person, and I'm really excited for what you're going to be bringing. Thank so you. So we're not going to be, you're not going to be getting bigger. You're going to be more streamlined with the conditioning. And I'll, I mean, I'll maintain my size. It's not. More sexiness. Right. Right. Add all the sexiness. All the sexiness. <laughs> and I think, I mean, for me, it's like even guest posing or just being open to the public eye is if I could help my 10-year-old self or my 8-year-old self, which we've started doing a bunch of stuff at like high school gyms. Um, I think if I would have met someone like myself at 8, 10, 11, I could have saved myself a lot of heartache uh, just accepting myself what are you doing in high school gyms now um just going into their weight rooms helping teach them how to train really? and yeah so i have um there's six high schools now are that you I'm doing videos with. of this uh we're gonna start i so was gonna say why haven't we yeah, heard about this it, it's kind of a tricky because there has ah. to be releases oh, you know because okay. they're they're of children minors and right. they're but it's been something i really enjoy this is great alicia i, I really enjoy um and like i said if if i had a girl that looked like me when I was mm-hmm. nine and I was like, oh, well, that's okay. She's she's not 110 pounds and a ballerina, but she's still pretty and still feminine. And, you know, I think it's important, not just for girls, but. So what are the things you're looking forward to do? I mean, outside of bodybuilding. Um, the photography thing, I think we just kind of touched on that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's always been a passion of mine. I've just always been a little bit intimidated from the technical standpoint. Um, but I had so many women confiding in me, asking me which photographer to work with, or what do you think about this? Or what do you think about that? That I really started feeling like it's such a male dominated industry. It is. Um, and being a female and being on the other side of the camera, I feel like I can make them feel really comfortable mm-hmm. and I know also what the fans want to see mm-hmm. so um, and, and I'm not trying to get in their pants yeah <laughs> I'm like you know I just want to make them their, that is their very true, best right? self yeah. I really so I'm still practicing on it because I'm, I'm a bit of a perfectionist um, I'm taking yes, courses yeah. so I'm in in a college class good for you learning i saw your whole stacks of cameras and videos so we're we're practicing i'm using the dog and the kids Mm -hmm. and the nieces and nephew so i'm practicing i think it's great that you're looking out for other people and the females and the competitors because we do go through a lot of stuff there are photographers out there who are not photographers right they're just holding a camera and you know i'm not trying to offend anybody but it's true it is just holding a camera Mm -hmm. they're just wanting to get off yeah get a couple pictures you know and these girls have no idea yep they're so innocent yeah i wish i knew uh what i know now then because it changes a lot of things and trying to help the newer girls you know curve that learning period make it a little quicker (laughs) i had a guy who i did a photo shoot with my first actually second show i didn't know any better right you know and he was trying to come on to me 
And I'm like, uh, I can't do this. I'm done. Don't yeah. You know, no, I can't. This is not and nobody should be put in that situation. No, it's not. really frustrating. Mm-hmm. So not only that, um, I've also seen like some lazy photography. Like I see a physique and I'm like, oh my gosh, this woman is stunning and beautiful. And the picture is like straight on, no lights, no, like, I just don't feel like they've mm-hmm. done her any justice. Going outside of the photography, is there anything else that you want to do? Like, I would suggest a clothing line. Oh, that could be. Well, I mean, look, you have sexy, you're sexy. And anything that you wear, like, I would want to wear. <laughs> oh, example, like yeah. your, your dress you have on now, like, I would wear that. So if you had right. your own specific clothing line, I think that would do very well because a lot of girls right. aspire to be like you. Right. And there's a lot right now that want to be big like you, but some are afraid. Right. You know, to move into yes, that to move into direction. That. There are some who also want to get enhanced. Right. And who are afraid. Right. You know, because they don't know like what's. And that is one thing I would like to say, um, you know, the boob thing or plastic surgery or, you know, my my reaction to that was I respect your opinion. You're absolutely 100 percent entitled to it. Like if a judge tells you to do something or I, you have to take that and listen to it and absorb it. But at the end of the day, you're only on stage one day out of the year. It's the other 364 days that you have to be comfortable mm-hmm. in your skin. That's a good way of putting it. So and it's, I agree with you. you know, I mean, take their professionals. They're telling you what they mm-hmm. want to see and you do listen, take the criticism, but always still, I think, remain true to yourself. Right. They mean well and yeah, they do absolutely. a good job. And they do. Yeah, they do. They I mean, do. they have your best intentions and I've received tons of amazing feedback that has really helped me. Well, again, you won the Chicago Pro Show. And if people don't know, I'm going to say you're a three time when you won the most muscular award. You know, that that was a nice paycheck, too. Yeah. Was that like 10 grand, 8 yeah. grand? It was like amazing. That? Yeah, yeah. It was amazing. Seriously. So that in itself says a lot about you. Mm. You're an incredible woman as a bodybuilder, as an, you know, as a professional, and in your personal life, you're a fabulous mother. Mm, I appreciate that. You know, that. Um, I want nothing but success for you. No, thank and it's you. funny. I mean, you have so many friends. I want to ask you some off-topic things real quick, though. Your most famous person you have on your phone is who? Oh, most famous celebrity. Uh, gosh, that's a hard one, Belle. Um, it could be anyone. Gosh, I don't know. Unless it's top secret. Alex Smith, probably. Alex Smith? Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. Let's get a phone call. <laughs> uh, what was it like working with Allegra? Oh, it was great. She's amazing. Yeah, she is amazing. She's a beautiful person. What size is she? Oh, boobs? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. She, oh, she's going to kill me if I get this wrong. So I better not quote numbers. Oh. But, you know, she's a Utah. She's from she Utah. She is in Utah. Mm-hmm. Well, she's from Utah. Oh, she's from Utah. Okay. Yes. Oh. She has five babies. Five. Mm-hmm. Right. Are we going to see more videos of you guys? Oh, I, I'll always shoot with Allegra. She's great. And it, just like myself or anybody, you know, people judge her. Don't judge a book by its cover. Right. She's, She's a sweet woman. The most genuine. Great mother. She'll tell you the truth. Mm-hmm. She'll, I mean, she genuinely lifts women up. She. Yeah. Are we going to see you working with more influencers? Yeah, I would be open yeah. to it. I think it's important to. Bridget put, the Midget? <laughs> To put muscle into into other <laughs> other avenues, you know. Um, Dodge so. <laughs> yeah. So it's. I mean, and I think another thing um, at this point in my life, at this age, you know, I've never thought that I would only have one kid. So I would be open to having another kid. Um, really, which a lot of people don't know or would think that so it's none of their business whatever they think you know it's what you want to do obviously and for me i mean being a mother that you don't compare those two Mm -hmm. bodybuilding is at least in my world bodybuilding is bodybuilding um being a mother is something i had to have in my life which is why i don't think it's a coincidence i got my pro card after i had my little one Mm -hmm. um i knew i couldn't put everything i needed to into the sport until i i had that piece when what is your ultimate goal with women's bodybuilding i mean when are you going to say okay you know what now i've done what i needed to do i'm done 
mm-hmm. competing in? Uh, age-wise or? It doesn't matter. I definitely don't see myself competing for a really, really long time. Um, I do see myself being involved in it. Um, I love the sport. I love helping the girls, um, you know, giving them any advice that I have or knowledge that I have that I wish I had earlier. You know, it'd be awesome um, if you actually promoted a show. Mm, I would love to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would love. What to would do you that. call it if you did? Ooh, you're the one. You're the good one with names. No, I. Um, <laughs> I don't know. We would have to think of a good one though. Would it be open to every like? Men's bodybuilding yes. and women's, yeah, yeah. I think that'd be a good idea actually if you had your own show. Yeah, uh, I would love that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think it would draw a bunch of people just you know thinking about the future and right things ahead. Now, do you have any hidden talents? Hidden talents, things that nobody knows. I want to know five things about you nobody knows. Ooh, um, I mean, give me the skinny. I uh, like I'm more athletic, I think, than people realize. Okay, so like. You know, I beat most people in a hundred yard dash. I can still hit a softball left hand, right hand. Left hand? Uh huh. Oh. Um, I'm fiercely competitive, though. I hate to that lose. That I do know. Yeah. I hate to lose. Play cards? I play cards. Play any musical instruments? Oh, no. I'm terrible. Terrible. You sing? Oh, no. Bell, no. I wish I could. I seriously do. Now, but you no. do pole dance, though. I try, yes. And you're uh, very good at that. I try. I'm pretty heavy, so I, it gets easier when I get a little lighter. Mm-hmm. But that is something I would like to get better at, too. I think that's a great... You ever try aerial stuff? I haven't yet. That that's on my sexy. list, though, for yeah. sure. All right. So what can we expect from you this year competing? This year... Um, What's you, the goal? The goal... Um, if I'm just going to be 100% honest, I my goal is to win the Miss Olympia. I want all honesty. So yes. Yeah. Okay. I mean that is my goal if okay. I'm if I'm keeping it real. I um can honestly say for the first time in my career in my life, I believe for myself that I'm capable of that and that I deserve to be there and it took me a long time to get to that point. You have been capable of being the best since you were born. <laughs> <laughs> this is it's, true. Yeah, it's been everything at work. you have touched has turned to gold. It mm. turns you, you make it beautiful. Yeah. Everything. I mean, you're very successful at anything you do. And it, just like anything else, it's been time and work and trial and error and learning. And but I, f- I do feel like I'm in I'm in the right place at the right time. I'm in a good place in my life. You've got a great coach too. Yeah, yeah, I do. I, and I have an incredible support system. Mm. I have amazing fans. Um, and I've never done an Olympia. So they got rid of the Olympia the year I got my pro card. So, and I sat in the audience last year and cried and cried and cried because really? I wasn't up there. Aww. Uh, yeah, I was really but disappointed. But it fired you up though. It saying, did. You know what? I'm going to come on the stage. And everything happens for a reason. Everything and actually does, yes. sitting and watching it, I was like, I should be there. Mm-hmm. And it did. It, g- it gave me some extra... Mm-hmm motivation Good. so Good. i'm excited i'm Good. excited for this year i'm excited for you alicia do you yeah. want to tell your fans anything before we sign off all your social media stuff yeah um i mean it's just alicia young fbb uh instagram has sort of done like their whole shadow band thing for me so i don't really i don't think i pop up unless you type the whole name oh. so it's alicia young fbb um i have a website alicia young.com um, I just want to tell the fans thank you. I mean, it, they've seriously like made this possible for me because, as you know, it's they love you to it's death. It's an expensive yes. hobby. It's a very so without their support and encouragement and financially, it'd be really difficult. What do you think a girl spends a year on the? Ooh, man! I just did my taxes. Fifty thousand, sixty thousand. I mean, I think each prep I would say is probably between five and six thousand. Yeah, that's it. If you're really on, yeah. a, you know, watching what you're doing. Yeah. That's and really watching. Yeah. So, I mean, it's expensive. Because I know some have spent like 15000 Yeah. You know. Absolutely. And you can easily do that. I mean, a suit alone, that's two grand mm-hmm. right there. Then your trainer, depending on who you're hiring, that's right. maybe five grand, yep. two grand. Posing. Posing. Food. Food. It's. Clothing. It's madness. Travel. All yep. that good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, lastly, I just want to say, how come we don't have any Alicia Young t-shirts? 
Oh, we need should stuff. make some. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'll we get some merch. Would, we need some swag some wear from merch. you. Okay. Some merch, leggings, some t-shirts. Uh, I always feel like, and this is just the honest truth, I feel like it, it's, it comes across so vain. No, like, it does I not. Like, I don't want no, no. Be, be that girl that's, like, with a t-shirt with myself. or No, like, it's not. I, just I mean, I like, get what you're saying, but yeah. you have a lot of fans that love you and would buy oh. your swag wear. And, that's and I want good. I want to see the muscle, Alicia, yes. with the boobs popping out. We could do, like, a silhouette. The silhouette, right. Thing. Mm -hmm. Hardcore. Yes. You know, and then have like a catchy saying on it. Seriously, yes. think about it. Okay. I'll be your first buyer. You're, well, and you're the, you have the imagination, so oh, I'm going to hold you. You have the imagination. Oh, she's going to hold me up. Here we go. <laughs> well, Alicia, thank you very much for being on my show. It's been a real pleasure. You're beautiful. Thank you. I'm looking Thanks forward so to much for having oh, me. Oh, I'm you excited. Make me Can you blow a kiss through your fans? All right, everybody. Fit Rockstar signing off. Thank you again, Miss Alicia Young. See you next time, everyone. Bye.